Welcome, friends, to Daily Moments of Inspiration. You know, I was considering the trials and the problems that David of old went through, and I was comparing them to the trials and problems that we as Christians go through today. And there's so much we can learn from David and the Psalms and the things that David spoke of and the Holy Scripture that gives us strength and a hope of eternal life. The Bible says that David, when he was going through these great trials, and he was in great despair, wondering what he could do, and almost in despair as to uh, a hope in this life. But you know, he said this, he said that he couldn't understand until he said he went into the sanctuary of God. And then when he went into the sanctuary of God, in that moment of quietness and in that moment of stillness before God, as the Bible says to be still and know that I am God. And when he went before God in that stillness, then God spoke to his heart and faith came to his heart. And the scripture says, I am continually with thee. And he says, thou hast holding me by my right hand. I think about how that Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you, but I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. And even as we consider the trials and the problems that we go through in this very day that we live in today and the problems that we face today, we know this, that He is continually with us as Jesus said that He would be and He holds us by our right hand. I like that, don't you? I think about how that a father watches over his child. And when that child would walk out into a place of danger, as long as his father is holding him by his hand, he's perfectly safe. And I think about this, that God, our, our, as our Heavenly Father, that He holds us by our right hand. And though at times we might seem like we're alone in this world, going through trials and afflictions by ourselves, wondering how we're going to get through them, then we realize that the scripture says that he holds us by our right hand. And he's our heavenly father. He's a good father. And he's able to take care of his children. And he says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Oh, God is a God that will guide us. And God is a God that will lead us. And God is a God that will keep us in trouble. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he directs their paths. And listen to what he said in this psalm. David of old said this. He said, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their plea. You know, God is ever watchful, and he knows our need, and he keeps us in time of trouble. And then he says for this, Everyone that is godly shall pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Oh my, as we go through the day, we can praise God because he gives the song in our heart. And that's a song of deliverance. And he says, I will instruct thee, and I will teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye. And so God is a God that guides us, and he's with us all along life's journey. Remember this when we think about the great heritage that the children of God have, and the wonderful hope that we have in eternal life. Remember this, what Jesus said about the kingdom of God. Jesus says, Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. And so you know there's something here as we consider this. We consider what is salvation? What is a new path to count all that we have and have to gain in this world is nothing that we might attain unto Christ and unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul the Apostle considered this, and he said that it was worthwhile to give up everything in this world that the world has to offer, that we might put Christ number one in our life and follow Him all the days of our life. And so Paul said this, What things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, he says, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge 
of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Friends, we have a hope, not just a hope that's in this life, but we have a hope beyond this life into the next life, and that is a hope of the resurrection of the dead. Like Job of old said, I said this, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that I shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins, my inward being, be consumed within me. Friends, we hope, have a hope of a better life. We have a hope of a better resurrection. And this is a hope of eternal life, which is a heritage of the children of God. May God bless you greatly and richly is our prayer.